Welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain a concept in biology in less than 5 minutes. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button first. In this installment, we'll be talking about the northern blot. So northern blot, in short, it's a technique which is used to detect our RNA of interest in a sample. So let's say in this cell, cell line, we want to detect that our gene of interest is expressed or not. The way we can do it is to uh, define or to find the RNA which is produced from the gene of interest X. So we are going to target RNA X in this sample. So first we need to isolate the whole RNA. The whole RNA after the whole RNA extraction we can run the sample in the gel. Now after the gel running, so after the gel running the samples would be separated and there would be ribosomal RNA, mRNA of different length. So everything would be in the gel. But on the gel, we cannot manipulate it any further. So we have to transfer it into a membrane. And just like in Western, we use PPDF membrane. Here in case of Northern blot, we use nylon membrane, which is positively charged. And RNA is negatively charged. So the electri electrical transfer method to transfer the RNAs, negatively charged RNAs from gel to the membrane. Now, once it is in the membrane, we can put the membrane in an UV incubator. Now, this UV incubator, inside the UV incubator, the nylon membrane would cross-link with the RNA present on it. So now it's permanently fixed on the nylon membrane. So one alternative to nylon membrane is diazobenzyl oxymethyl paper, but it is case specific only some case where nitrocellulose or nylon membrane does not work then this alternative is there now the most important step is the probe hybridization step so we have to give probe so we know we want to detect gene in gene of interest x so the probe is against the uh, uh against the x mrna and it is labeled with a radio label let's say but nobody used radio label these days so yeah, people use pyogenylated levels or digoxygenin level, etc., which they can later detect colorimetric way. But that time when northern blot was invented, they used radioactive level. Now, the probe hybridization uh, works by complementary base pairing. So the probe would complementary base pair with the mRNA of interest. And if the probe is non specific, then it would be washed away when we are washing the membrane. With the buffer so only the specific interaction is retained and all the non-specific interactions are washed away after that we kind of uh, develop the membrane and get an autoradiograph of that and this is how an autoradiograph would look like and that is how the scientist would understand yeah the mrna x is present in this sample and this is the usage of norton blot but Northern blot is very quantitative and useful if we do a densitometric analysis after the after we get the autoradiograph. But the problem with this technique is it is hazardous because of radioactive probes and it is slow, takes a lot of time. But these days, real-time quantitative PCR is a lot lot better technique and it's faster, it is more sensitive than northern blot, but still real time in real-time PCR you would have some kind of amplification error. There is a chance of it. But in northern blot, you don't have that chance. So the quantification is more reliable in case of northern blot. People say old is gold. But yeah, this technique is almost obsolete these days. Nobody used northern blot. But still, it's good to know about the elegant method that was developed in late 90s. So if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.